Okay, so I think we're close enough. Uh, we're going to go ahead and jump in. Um, I am recording this workshop, so if uh, you would like to go back and view it later, it will be posted. Um, and uh, those who are, uh, if some come in late or aren't able to attend, uh, they can access the uh, information as well. Um, so this is the Using the Ultra Gradebook uh, workshop hosted by CIDL. And my name is Kevin Harris, and I'm the Instructional Support Coordinator here at CIDL. Um, this is my email address uh, and my phone number. Uh, if you have uh, any questions um, after this workshop or about anything else related to uh, technology, technology integration, Blackboard, or um, uh, anything with kind of the online or, or technical versions of your courses or technical aspects of your courses, uh, please feel free to reach out to me or um, you can also email CIDL as well uh, and um, we'll get back to you and help you work through any challenges that you have. Um, so this workshop today is uh, related specifically to Ultra. Uh, in the ultra grade book. So um, my question is uh, to all of you, um, what is your experience with ultra? And if you could just type in the um, in the chat bar, uh, in the chat box there, you can just use the numbers. Are you, are you new to ultra this semester? And so you're here to just get a general overview. Um, do you have some experience, but you're still unsure of some things? Uh, maybe you're just looking for pointers. Um, and number four, nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, you have a problem and you need it solved and you saw this and thought this was a great spot to come in uh, and ask your question. So um, if you have a, take a second, throw that in the chat and we'll kind of see where everyone is. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and jump in and get started. Okay, so we have some experience and uh, more experience, but still needing some, uh, some ways to perhaps improve the use of the grade book. Good. Okay, good. All right, so good. So it looks like most people here have some experience. Uh, and so um, we can look at ways to kind of like refine our use of the grade book or um, look to see if there's any aspects um, of the grade book that, we, that we're not using or that we're under, under utilizing. Um, and then from here, I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna do one more slide and then, um, and then I'm going to jump into uh, more of a demonstration. So um, we have a website that's Blackboard specific at niu.edu uh, slash Blackboard slash Ultra. Uh, and here you can find uh, a number of resources, guides, toolkits, uh, any sort of like upcoming uh, workshops, some FAQs. Um, all that information can be found here uh, and is a great resource um, if you're just looking for uh, something new to try or if you have some questions and you're trying to figure out, uh, it's a great starting point. And we also post um, in here as, as well some upcoming features. So Blackboard releases new features every month um, and uh, they usually come, of, come online around the first week of each month. Uh, and some of those can be relevant to today's topic. For example, uh, on February 1st, you're now going to be able to download um, the gradebook, uh, input the grades, uh, and now you can input comments and upload those back into the gradebook and the override comments, that's how they transfer over, will now appear in, or will as of February 1st appear in the gradebook. So uh, Blackboard's making uh, new changes all the time. Um, and so it's, it's worth kind of keeping an eye on here um, to see what's new. All right, so now I'm gonna switch screens uh, and just jump into um, actually just running kind of a walkthrough on how to set up the gradebook uh, and how to uh, maybe improve your usage uh, as well. Um, one or two last things before I really jump in. Uh, one, I talk really fast. And so if I'm going too fast, please just throw a, uh, you can unmute and let me know, or you can just throw a chat in uh, to kind of just keep me aware of it. Um, and number two, and I just did it, so it might um, cause a problem. I, with my microphone, if I bump, this little volume button. Sometimes I turn into pure static. Uh, if that happens, please throw something into the chat or unmute and let me know uh, so that I don't just sit here talking for <laughs> a long period of time. Um, okay, so let's go, I guess. the um, I'm in my Blackboard course. Uh, the first thing is how do we access, uh, in case anyone on here is new uh, and you don't know how to access the gradebook. In original, uh, the gradebook was called Grade Center. Um, in Ultra, it's called the Gradebook. 
And the primary uh, place that you would access it is by opening your course and then clicking uh, gradebook up here um, in your top toolbar. There are other places to, to access it. Um, the one being you can actually access the gradebook for a specific item, uh, an assignment or a test, for example, from within uh, that assignment. Um, or you can um, access it from base navigation as well by going over here to grades. And then you can access um, all, of the, all of your grade books uh, here in one space. So let me go back. And here we go. So this is what uh, your gradebook looks like if you start from scratch uh, without importing uh, your course uh, from, a, from a previously taught course, uh, or if you haven't entered anything yet. Um, the first thing to do, I think, when you access your course in gradebook, or I'm sorry, in Blackboard, is to set up um, the gradebook. Uh, and you'll want to do that um, by going into gradebook. And then uh, when you first log in, you can actually uh, do some of the, the work here. Um, but you can click this settings wheel out here to the right um, underneath student preview. Um, like everything else in Blackboard, we're going to find that there are some hidden features that if we hover over them, they'll turn purple and we can click them. Uh, and we can access additional features uh, through this settings wheel. So if we go into the settings, um, the first thing you're going to want to set up is your grade schema. So this is going to determine what the student's grade means or how it's reflected in the course. Uh, and most undergraduate courses uh, typically make at least one change to the to the um, auto-generated schema, um, which is, I believe, eliminating um, a C minus. This is really up to you and your department uh, and um, how these grades are kind of determined. One thing to note is that um, these grade ranges are um, kind of set. So if it's less than 93, so if it's a 92.8, it does not round up to a 93. So if um, your students are used to that, that's something you could change uh, if you choose. And you can change that by clicking um, the three dots out here, clicking edit, and then you can, you can change the range or you can change um, the grade name or the label over here. Uh, setting this up early uh, is going to probably save you some headaches um, once you start posting assignments uh, and then students will email you fairly quickly, as I'm sure you know, if um, they think there's something wrong with their grade. So uh, getting this done uh, early is going to be quite useful. If you want to add an additional row, you can just kind of hover in between where these lines are, click the plus, and then you can add um, a new grade name and the range here as well. Uh, and then when you're finished, you can just click save. Uh, make sure you click save, otherwise you'll lose all of your work. Um, and then it will reset here. Um, the other thing that you can do uh, is add a new schema. So you can add um, a number of different schema if you choose. So you may have like a pass fail schema that you use um, or a complete incomplete. <clears throat> uh, it's really up to you how you choose to set those up. But you do that by clicking uh, the plus sign up here in the upper left. Uh, and then you name the schema. So we're just going to uh, be, be fairly specific um, on this because you can actually copy a schema from one course to the next. Uh, and you may want to bring this schema with you next semester or next year. Um, and if you have a clear name, it'll be significantly easier for you to find. So I'm going to just call it new schema two, uh, which is not a good name, but it works for this purpose. And it gives me these two, an A and an F. And then again, I can go in here and you know add a B. Uh, like that. So you just click the um, the plus and then you can add. And if you want to delete, you can just click the little trash can out here and that will delete uh, anything that you've added there. So that's the grade schema. Um, and again, that just determines what the points or the category weights of your course actually translate to um, for students. The other well, there are several other main features here um, in this settings tab that you're going to want to address. Um, one is if, if you want to be notified of, of inactivity, you can set that here or um, a performance. So if, if a student's score drops into an F 50% uh, or 60%, you can, um, it, it, you can set it so that it will send um, alerts about uh, struggling students. Um, but the, the, uh, the second thing that I think is um, important to set up here, and again, um, we are in the gradebook and we're over here in the settings wheel. 
um, is this, and, and we get a lot of um, requests here at CIDL on, on this issue here, which is automatic uh, zeros. So by default, um, the gradebook is set to score an automatic zero if an assignment is not submitted um, or if it's submitted late, uh, and that will immediately reflect on the student's grade that they see. So um, sometimes that, that means they didn't turn something in and that can save you uh, a headache if you have a, a large class, you may want automatic zero set. Um, but it's really important to pay attention to the settings when you import um, courses from, from one semester to the next, because uh, an assignment may be posted and if the due date isn't adjusted, it may automatically be set to score zero and then students' grades can, um, can be thrown off. Of course, it can always be adjusted, but you're very likely to receive a, a number of emails um, if, if the automatic zeros are set and something is being scored as a zero that shouldn't be. So um, that's an option uh, and it's really up to you and your preference. The other um, main feature here is the overall grade. Um, so this is going to really depend on you uh, and, and again in your department, how you choose to calculate the overall grade. The two most common calculations are total points um, or weighted. Um, you can use categories within total points and you have to use categories within weighted. Um, and we can take a look at those. Uh, it's, it's important to select this early um, when you first get your course, um, and you can always change it later if you need to. There's also an advanced um, setting as well. Uh, and if this, is, if this is something that you want to use, this is probably worth, and you need assistance on it, it's worth setting up an, a, an appointment with a member at, here at CIDL uh, to work through this. It kind of goes beyond what we're gonna cover in this workshop. So I'm gonna click total points just so we have something to work with. Um, and it takes us into this screen here. So now our overall grade screen um, looks like this. If we wanna change it to weighted, all we have to do is click weighted here and then click save. Or if we wanna change it back to points, then we can click here and we can click save. Um, this feature here is has newly been added, I believe. So it's going to calculate grades based on points earned out of total graded points. Um, so here, if you are someone who will leave something blank uh, if you turn this off, if you if you don't put a score in for a student, it will take the score out of the numerator and the denominator. Uh, but if you leave this checked and you don't put a score in, they won't have that point value, but it will be calculated as part of the total grade. So um, this is a setting that you may want to check to see how you have it set and just know moving forward um, that you just kind of pay attention if, if you if you mark something, uh, if you just leave something blank and don't give it an exception or an exemption, um, that it may still be counting against the students, uh, very similar to a zero. And then here is how the grade is um, depicted or, or displayed to students. You can put it as points, um, percentages, a letter, and any other schema that you uh, use here, you can import your schema. Um, so there's the new schema two that I created, and it will show uh, using that, um, uh, that set of letter grades instead of the, the regular letter grade that was um, kind of preset. This is also uh, another reason why it's important to, to have a, a name that you remember when, when you create your schema uh, so that you can set it here uh, and avoid some confusion. And then you can choose if students see the grade, uh, their overall grade or not uh, with this setting here. Uh, okay, so that is essentially the overall grade setting. Um, as you can see over here on the left, there are eight preset categories um, that, that Blackboard provides. If you were an original user and you wanted to add an item, you might see all of these items in the drop-down menu. Um, in Ultra, when you create an item, it's essentially the main two assessments are assignment, there's discussion as well, uh, but assignment and um, test. And then once you create that, you can go in and actually change the name to or the category to, to any of these eight presets, or you can create your own categories. And even if you use total points, uh, it might be worth using um, those created categories, um, especially if you are someone who likes to drop scores. So uh, if you want to drop scores, even if it's total points, it's important that those scores are marked within that um, category. So for example, you may give 10 quizzes um, and you want to drop the lowest score well, you would come into this screen here and then you would click edit calculation rules. And then you can uh, click enable over here and then you can drop, you know, the two lowest 
Uh, you can also drop the highest scores. I'm not sure that people ever do that, but that's an option. Um, or you can choose to use only uh, some of the uh, items within that category. So it's still useful to, to mark the categories of, of an assignment or an assessment um, in case you want to come and um, add this piece here. So that's a great question. Will students see their scores that are dropped? Um, they will see that item in if you keep it visible um, in the gradebook, um, but it, it won't impact their overall grade. And when I when I import some material here in a second, I can show you what that means. But they'll still see that in the column. Um, but it, their overall grade, it, it just won't be factored into it. So they may have an A even if they got a zero on one of the quizzes uh, because that quiz was dropped. Um, you can also, once you have these items set, um, you have the option to, um, you can exclude it. Uh, you can exclude the item and categories from the overall grade calculation. So let's say I, I'd given all of these quizzes, but I really want them to be uh, some uh, formative assessments and I don't want them to count. I can actually exclude all of them from the calculation. Um, or uh, let's say I have one of those quizzes uh, is I, I've determined to be more significant than the others. And so, um, and this is especially true if you're using like a weighted categories. Um, you can actually break it out of that, um, out of that that weighted category into its own. Um, and uh, and once you do that, then you could just kind of say this set of the quizzes is going to be worth six, and that's maybe ten quizzes, but one quiz is going to be worth four percent of the overall grade. And so you have you have a um, quite a bit of liberty that you can you can take here, um, using using categories. The other uh, useful piece of information that's in this um, settings wheel are the categories themselves. So uh, Blackboard has created eight presets, um, which are these. Uh, they each have um, their own little icon or similar icons, um, but you can add really as many as you want. You cannot delete these. You can choose not to use them um, as uh, when we're here in the overall grade setting. Uh, if you just wanted to, let me save this so I have it. Um, if you don't want to use it, you can just exit out and it won't count towards the, that won't count towards the grade, but um, or just not select it when you assign a category. But uh, the if you click this add new category, you can you can add as many categories as you want. So I, I taught uh, history for 11 years and we did a lot of simulations. So I might add a simulations category here as, as a part of the grade or, or maybe you want to add a participation category or a uh, you have I taught at a school once that gave something between a quiz and a, and a test. And so they called it a quest. And so we would have written quest here as, a, as an assignment type. Um, it's really up to you. You can add as many as you want. When you add new ones, so I, I didn't save. Um, oh, because there's already a pre uh, presentation one. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I'm having an issue here, but uh, when you click this and you type it in, typically it should show up here. And when it does, it's gonna have this blank um, icon. So you can't you can't change the icon, it's not customizable. Uh, and like I said, you can't delete the other presets, um, but essentially this is how you add the, the categories. For whatever reason, I'm having an issue with it not actually staying there. Um, that's okay, it's not that important for this. Uh, now that I've created and set that overall grade, you'll actually see it here as well. Um, and then one other thing that I jumped over at the beginning because I didn't have anything in here um, is that there are multiple views that you can take in the gradebook. So you can look at gradable items, uh, which would look like this, just a list of gradable items. This is a great view if you want to move things around in your gradebook because you can click this um, little up down arrow here and hold it down and drag and drop. If I had a list of 10 items, I could move them around that way. Um, if you can also add items by kind of hovering over these purple, anywhere there's a gray line or a plus sign, and you can click the plus sign, and you can add an item here if you want to add um, a new item. So I can just call this um, in class test one. Uh, I'm going to make it visible to students. I can set the, um, uh, if it's a grade using points, percentage, or whatever. And I can set the maximum points. Uh, and then I want, ah, look there, my, <laughs> they just didn't, I needed to refresh the 
uh, refresh that page. Now I have four simulation columns. Um, now I can set it as uh, test here and save. And now I have a new item that just appears in the gradebook. I can go to student view as well and see this. So each student's grade. Um, and you can go in to the student and then see all of the items for a student this way. And then the other gradebook view, which is um, uh, the grid view. This is a very traditional gradebook view. So all the students are, are um, go down here, and then all of the assignments in the class will stretch across the top here. So I added um, an item from the list view by hovering and clicking the purple plus. You can also add an item uh, in the grid view by just kind of hovering in between here um, and, and clicking here. So I'm gonna add a second item and we'll just say this one was in class. Test two, I'm gonna make it visible to students. Um, one thing to note is that even if an item is uh, invisible to students, it still calculates in their, um, in their total grade. So uh, this is where we run into a number of problems when we import full courses. Some of these items will be set um, as invisible to students and they may receive an automatic zero on them. And so they may see three assignments that all have 100% on them, but they also have three invisible assignments that you can see, but they can't, that are marked as zero. Um, and so then their grade reflects as a as a 50% over here and all, of, all they see are, are A's. And so uh, it's important to note that, um, that, that even if you mark it hidden, it still reflects here in the overall grade. Uh, and, and again, <laughs> you'll, as I'm sure you know, you'll, you'll, you will hear from students um, with their concerns on that issue. So, um, so that's how you add items from the gradebook. So some people like to do this. You, they, you do a lot of in-class assignments. You don't really use Blackboard that much for the assignments. Uh, this is how you would add the items to the gradebook. So you hover, you click the plus, you add the item. And then if you wanna move them, again, you can go into this list view. Let's say I wanna move this one up. I can hover, uh, find a spot that I wanna put it and then, um, drag and drop it that way. So that or, yeah, it's not going. There you go. You gotta just, uh, you drag and then you have to hold for a second and then drop. Um, and now you can move them around. And that reflects um, on this screen as well. Other ways that we get items in our gradebook um, are by adding them here on our content page. Uh, and so if we click add content and we create, um, we have, again, we have the, the test and the assignment, the discussion and the journal uh, that all appear here. Uh, let's put a uh, test. And then uh, we actually wanna make this a quiz. So we'll call it quiz one. And then if we wanna change the uh, category, we can do that right here. So we just go into the category, go from test, we're gonna call it a quiz. There are a number of settings that you can do. These are more advanced than we're gonna cover in this class, um, but you can do delegated grading. You can do two graders per student. Uh, you can also do anonymous grading on some um, assignment types. And again, if you're interested in those types of um, uh, features, you can reach out to CIDL and we can set up um, a consultation and work through those. Uh, and then also again, uh, there are other other settings in here like posting grades automatically so if you have a, uh, a multiple choice quiz you can choose whether or not that grade goes in immediately or or not and if you accept uh, late assignments you can mark assessments as formative um, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be excluded from the gradebook you will have to exclude it as well um, but you can mark it as a formative assessment and then here's where you kind of um, you know if you're collecting things offline uh, this is one way that if you don't want to add items manually into the gradebook, but you don't want students submitting them. You want them to see the directions here, but you don't want them to submit the assignment here. You can collect submissions offline and that will prevent them from submitting. I'm just gonna save this. Uh, and so now we have, um, let's make it visible. Uh, so now we have a quiz. Students can go in and, and take my quiz. Um, and if we go back to the gradebook, it's now going to appear out here. Um, I can also, you can also access uh, grading for this specific item by opening it, clicking on it to open it, and then clicking submissions. Uh, and then you can grade them here. You can add your grades here and they will reflect in the gradebook. So let's just 
Let's see, I didn't study. Give me a 50. Um, and now I'm, re I'm reflected here. And you can see my overall grade is set as an F. And again, I could have set that as a percentage or as a total uh, number value and so on. So uh, adding items to the grade book, if you want to just add an item but it not be on the content page, the plus sign, anytime that you create an item, it automatically creates uh, the item in the grade book. This is, this is confusing sometimes. People will go in and, and make all of the, uh, they'll go and open their syllabus and they'll go in and make uh, an assignment here for all of their items. Uh, and then they'll go in and actually make the assignments in the content page. Uh, and then they want to like link them and you, you can't do that. So uh, if, you, if you're going to create um, a content item for that assignment, don't add another item in the gradebook for it. Otherwise you'll have a duplicate um, uh, set of columns here that you then have to delete one or hide one or um, whatnot. And it's gonna just take more, more of your time. Um, other, other ways to get items in your gradebook, you can import individual items. So if you, um, you can do this by clicking the plus and then click copy content, or um, you can click this three dots out here to the right of the uh, magnifying glass. And you can click import content. Um, and then you can, nope, that's, that's false. Copy items is what you wanna click. Um, and then you can select your course here. Uh, so let's say I want to go into, if you want to copy in the entire course, you can click this here and it will copy in your entire course. If you do that, any of the items that you manually uh, set up, so the ones that we added from the gradebook, they will come into the gradebook. If you want to, let's just say I had created um, an item in this class in the gradebook, but not in the content page, I can't pull that in. I have to actually recreate that on its own unless I do a full course copy. And if I do a full course copy, it'll copy in everything. So let me walk through those. Um, so you can, you can pull in the grade schema here if you want, uh, but I'm gonna go into content and I'm gonna add this uh, major assignment one. I'm gonna copy that in. Anytime that you do a copy, it's, uh, it's worth your time, I think, to check the due dates and times. Um, and then to check in the gradebook uh, to ensure that it's actually visible to students. So um, I'm just gonna refresh here. So this is invisible to students. Um, so I wanna make it visible. We're not gonna worry about this. I think it's probably just font stuff. Um, I'm gonna make this visible to students. And then if I go into the gradebook, I now have my major assignment. And you see, this is, this is where you run into some problems. So when I, when I copied it in, uh, the due date has already passed because it copied the due date from my old course into my new one. And all of these, I had automatic zero set. So all of these popped in and now all my students have Fs. Um, they, see, they think they have an F and, and you're gonna have some panic that way. So um, you can go in and, and change the settings by just opening the assignment um, and then altering the due date. Uh, through there. So um, let's actually, there we go. So if I change the due date and then if I go back to the grade book, it's deleted those zeros now. So it, it can all be fixed, um, but it's, it's just worth noting um, at the beginning. So those items, if you copy an item in, it copies in. It's worth your time and, and energy, I think, to check the settings to make sure the due dates are where you want them to be. Um, because like I said, students will see them and then um, it, it can alter their grade. The other way to copy items in, um, so we're gonna copy, I'm gonna copy an entire course here and I'm gonna copy this course in. So let's say I taught this course last semester. I just wanna set, up, set it up exactly how I had it last semester into this semester's course. So I do a full course copy and I'm gonna give this a second to work its way over. All right, I'm gonna refresh because there's not a whole lot in here. So it probably has already completed. Yeah, here we go. Um, so now I have these other assignments that have come in um, as well. So if I go into the gradebook. I can see that all of these are uh, or have been 
edited now. And now it also imported my old, my grade schema from that other course. So uh, if I do a full course copy in after I've already started some things, it might make some changes for you. So if I wanna adjust this, I need to go back into my settings uh, and re, uh, uh, go, you know, make sure I'm using this, the schema that I want to be using. Um, so I want to be using letter and then I need to check my overall grade settings here under manage overall grade settings. Um, and I, I can set this up as, as letter percentage or so on. So, um, again, worth, worth checking there. This copied in as well. I had an overall grade category that copied in. This is something that I might just want to delete because, um, the overall grade, uh, it's already reflected here, right? So it's a kind of a duplicate item. Um, some other things came in as well. So I, I had an uh, LTI extension for a voice thread assignment that copied in. Uh, sometimes that will need to be kind of fixed um, depending uh, on this assignment itself, just to make sure that it's being uh, reflected in the overall grade. Uh, and then I had these Kaltura assignments that came in as well. So uh, I wanna go in, make any adjustments that I need to uh, for these, um, but for example, some of these items copied in. It's not always easy to get over here, but uh, and if they continue to go farther out here to the right, um, you may not see them. And, and so that the settings could be, they could have automatic zero set and you're not seeing them and the students aren't scrolling out there to the right and they're not seeing them. So again, if you do any sort of importing, it's worth your time to go into the grade book and just make sure that everything um, copied in. If you wanna do uh, a calculation here, you can. Uh, so you can add a calculation here uh, and you can put in you know, an average or total. So I just wanna check the total points here. I can click save. Oh, I can't. So, oh, okay, so here we go. So I, I have to actually select the items that I want, and then it will give me a point total based on um, on the items that I've selected. So let's just say I go in and select these. You can get you know more more kind of granular detail. You want to see how a student's doing on specific assi assessment types or assignment types. Um, you can use these to kind of calculate that. So here I have, you know, the calculation out of total points earned, uh, and that's based on just this one um, assessment. Here I also get the the total points of all of those categories being calculated at 620 for all of my items. Over here, you'll see that it just says 100, and that's because it's going to change. Uh, it's going to set this up out of 100 points, so that way when it does the calculation. Um, to determine the, the grade. It's a, it's a number out of 100, but it, it, it does the math on the back end. Um, so, yep, so check the dates, scroll over to make sure that anything um, that's been added to the course is visible and you can actually see it. See, there was one that I couldn't see there. So if I, I have to like find this slider and slide it over. Um, again, worth, it's worth the time, I think, to go in and, and uh, grab that piece. Um, let's see, only a few more things and we'll jump into some questions. Ah, so any item in the grade book, um, you can, um, you can choose to download, um, by clicking here. So if you are someone who likes to grade offline, um, or, um, people do it for different reasons, but you can, uh, you can download an item from the grade book, you can download the full grade book, or you can just download a, a specific item here. So I could just say, I'm going to download major assignment one, uh, and I want it to be, a, uh, you can be a CSV or an XLS file. You can download this. Um, and then now if I, I graded these and I wanted to just enter them here, some people choose to do this. Like I said, um, you can enter the score. So it's worth kind of adjusting these. So I can enter the total points that they earned. Um, as I said, starting February 1st, you'll now be able to add comments here as well. This is something that you couldn't do in the past. There's going to be some caveats on how you view those, but um, if, if this is how you grade, uh, that keep your eye out for that February 1st update. But you could do this, save it, and then I 
for this. I'm just going to get rid of it. And then you click here, and you can upload it um, by dragging and dropping it or searching for it on your computer. So that's another way to use the gradebook uh, and some of the features that are there. You can filter as well um, by by uh, content, uh, by I'm sorry, by categories or, or item type. Um, and that's an, a new update that's also been added to this list view. You can now sort your gradebook by the categories. In the past, this column had not been here. I think last month or the month before, this was a, a new add-on that Blackboard has done. Um, and then again, like I said, you want to just make sure that all of your cal everything in your calculations, everything that you want to be calculated is being calculated. Um, and so I'm going to check just one more time here in my settings. Um, so now I have um, an like so for example, I'm I'm using total points. Uh, you can see that that my assignments are at a 320, and the test is at a 200, um, and so on. If I want to. Let's say I wanted to drop this test. If I click out calculation rules here, I went over this a minute ago, but um, now that I actually have an item in here, I could drop the one lowest score and it would cut out one of those test scores. Um, but down here, I added a, it has a, an additional item. Uh, and there's a, a due date test item here. This is a thing that I've done um, out of 100 points, but this is actually not being counted. Uh, so if I want this to be counted, I have to go and check this. Sometimes this happens with um, add-ons as well. So I know that I've added some uh, or copied in some voice threads from one course to another, and then the they're excluded from the gradebook. So then you have to go in and, and set that up. So I uh, just kind of keep an eye on your gradebook and make sure it's behaving, you know, the way that you want it to. Um, the last two pieces are um, about accommodations and uh, exceptions. So if you're in the gradebook. Um, and you want to, let's say, um, I'm sorry. Uh, I can add or edit an exemption here for this test, uh, and I can exempt this student from this test. And that way it won't calculate um, this grade against him, even if I have the, the overall grade set to do so. So you may want to do this sometimes uh, for students. Um, if you have students with accommodations, so extended time being probably the, the most common one, this is something you also want to set up as early as you can to save yourself trouble down the road. And you do that through the roster. So if you just click on um, view everyone in the roster, let's say a student has a 50% um, an, 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 an extended time. If you click on the three dots next to their name in the roster and you click on accommodations, you can give them a due date extension. Uh, which just means they're not marked late um, for or they don't they don't get any doc uh, their, their grades not docked for submitting something late or you can give them an extra time limit so they, let's say they have a test and they need an extra 50 percent time you can add that here if you don't and a student opens a test and takes it um, and, and say the test is set to automatically submit after 30 minutes um, but they actually have 45 minutes it will submit their test after 30 minutes and you cannot reopen it for them for 15 more minutes. So it's really important to set this ahead of time um, to save yourself the problems or save yourself any sort of headache down the road because then you'll have to go in and either make a new test or reopen that test and then they have to start from the beginning and retake it. So um, this is how you set that and then you hit save and now you have the um, accommodation set. Uh, and again, this is very much worth doing, you know, as soon as you know that a student has an accommodation, um, getting this set up in here to just kind of save you the trouble down the road. And let me check my notes to make sure I didn't skip anything. And that's all I have. So um, we have 20 minutes left. If there are any kind of specific questions that you have, if I went too fast through something and you want me to go over something again, um, or, or really anything that you have that you'd like to know more about, um, you can throw it in the chat or you can unmute and let me know and we can take a look at it. Uh, hi, this is Kate. Um, I, I actually have uh, several questions. So I'm like, maybe I'll just start with one and then let other people have a chance and et cetera. Okay. Let me, uh, give me one second. I'm gonna stop the recording. So that way, if you have any, uh, information that you'd like to be uh, private, it won't. Um... Oh, I, I'm sorry, I stopped sharing. I meant to stop the recording.